Hello and welcome to This Week in African Tech. This is a witty, irreverent look at the African tech industry. Now, if this is something that's interesting to you, let's go. The next segment is called the rapid fire segment. This is where we talk about who's raising money, who's doing well, and who is not. First up, InterSwitch, Nigeria-based payment business has been rumored to be having conversations with Anchor investors in its bid to IPO in London in as early as November. Now, according to Bloomberg, if this IPO were to go through, this company will be valued at about $1.5 billion. 20, 30, 40. 40. Shut up! 100,000. Oh my god! 110. No, we've never seen this. 160. 210,000 schmousing dollars. Next, Lara Health, Kenya based medical startup, which provides AI based diagnostic devices along with its electronic medical record system, has raised over $730,000 from Chinese Angels, Shaka VC, Chandra Capital, and Vilgro, Kenya. Five African startups have raised $25,000 from the Baobab Accelerator Network. This is for 10% equity. Now, the companies involved are Ethiopian EdTech startup, Biblocky, Zimbabwean-based AI health platform, Dr. Katz, Kenyan InsureTech, Kak Bima, Nigeria payments platform Glade Pay and Ghanaian digital bank Penny Smart. Solaris Africa, Kenyan based commercial energy leasing company, has held a second closing of its Series A round. This is led by infrastructure investor EAV and European Union funded Electrify. Money Fellow, a Cairo based startup which digitizes and manages informal traditional rotation savings has raised over $1 million in pre-series A funding from 500 startups, Dubai Angel Network, and Phoenician funds. And lastly, Kenyan Salesforce automation startup Optometrics has raised $330,000 of debt financing from French commercial banks. Now this is the end of the rapid fire round. This segment is called the Meteor News. It looks like the Forbes 30 and the 30 list is becoming increasingly problematic. Now we know the story of Elizabeth Holmes who claimed that she had built a company that could enable many tests to be done with small drops of blood. We all know that that was not true. Also, we know of another famous Forbes 30 and 30 alumni in Victor's OB and who just committed an 11 million wire fraud and was picked up by the FBI. Now, in this year's list, Idris Sandu, a 21-year-old Ghanaian-born entrepreneur in the U.S., celebrated for his many accomplishments, which include selling algorithms to Twitter, Uber, Snapchat, and also receiving the Presidential Scholar Award from President Obama. Two Twitter users, The Lex Times and Andrew Dizzy, are beginning to question the inconsistencies in the claim from Idris. One car player which he claimed he invented does not have his name on the trademark. Secondly, they could not find his name on the Presidential Scholar Awards list. And lastly, there's a claim that he sold Instagram their Joe tagging algorithm. But according to these users, Instagram released their geotagging capabilities in 2013 instead of 2014 when he claimed to have sold it to them. Finish him! Listen, I want that there be plausible explanations. After all, he's Ghanaian born and I'm Ghanaian. But if it, this is not, we really do need to rethink how the media does its checks for these kind of claims. But I hope it isn't true. Data has become gold in election campaigns. We've seen this in the recent US elections where companies like Cambridge Analytica were used to collect 
pull and analyze data to enable the current president to win and also Cambridge Analytica was heavily involved in supporting and helping uh, the Brexit campaign. Umar Ba, a Senegalese data scientist who worked on uh, the Barack Obama campaign and brought along another Barack Obama campaigner to support the incumbent president in Senegal's elections. From the story, they created an army of volunteers which enabled them to collect a, a large number of data and use that data to enable the current president to win elections. A large number of countries in Africa do have data protection laws. Not a lot of them are able to enforce them. I think it's a good thing that data is being used in elections so that elections are scientific on the continent. But it does beg the questions around uh, data protection in Africa and the laws that are needed to ensure that the, the data that is collected from people does not become a form of currency. This last story is also from my Twitter feed. I noticed that in Aboyeji, one of the influential people in the Africa tech ecosystem who has founded a number of really interesting companies like Flutterwave, which is one of uh, Africa's largest payment platforms, and Andela, which just raised a hundred million in uh, Series D to take developers from Africa and consult them out for short-term projects across the globe. He, in his tweet, was talking about two people that he felt were people that should receive uh, legacy awards for when the, the Nigerian tech ecosystem grows to a certain level. Now, in response to that, Rebecca Enonchen, who is a Cameroonian angel investor and tech entrepreneur, who's built an enterprise technology company called AppStack, which is doing amazing work globally, and also a founding member of the African Business Angel Investors Network, as long as being on the top hundred most influential Africans list pointed out that Ian's list lacked women. Now Ian himself admitted that this, there was a great amount of sexism at the start of the Nigerian tech ecosystem and still prevails today. And there was a bit of an exchange where she thought his not mentioning women was denigrating the women that had worked hard in the ecosystem. Now I thought this was a fairly innocuous enough Twitter exchange and we'll just end and move on. Then Rebecca pointed out that Ian had uh, in fact blocked and I thought it was a little bit overkill. I'll, I'll talk about what I do want to talk about this story but Ian and Rebecca probably have um, a prior history in other conversations that led to the blockage. But here, here's the crust of the story. Ian then launches into what I think can only be described as an Elon Musk-like Twitter rant about the fact that the women empowerment groups in, in Nigeria, because he said his context was Nigeria, had not done a good job in um, making sure that there were more women in the tech ecosystem and that more, more doors were opened to women as if this was just the job of women empowerment groups. The reason why I say it's Elon Musk worthy is because Elon Musk has his moments on Twitter where you just think, do you not have friends that will tell you to stop it? Here's my take on the matter. As somebody who founded Women in Tech Africa that has a network of 5,000 women across 30 African countries, we need all hands on deck in ensuring that more women come into the tech space building scalable companies and encouraged into C-level roles in the tech space. But that will not happen if all we do is to point fingers. Everyone, everyone who is interested, including male allies, all need to put in the work so that we have the results that we need. Because yeah, it's not an easy job. This is the end of this week in African Tech. I hope you've enjoyed it. I leave you with this video. Now, in the meantime, if you like what I've said, you don't like what I've said, please leave a comment and let me know. If there are interesting stories that you think that I should include, please let me know. If there are fact checks that you have, 
please share and let us know enjoy your week